YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. Here you go for a great confirmation. Laura's pads on pole next to Cam Peterson and Josh Heron. Bobby Fong there in fourth. Jake Gagne and Chavi Forrest. See what Chavi can do today in the dry. Sean Dillon Kelly. Bobier needs a, just a good solid dry race. Get some points. Gillum Posh, JD Beach, and Ashton Yates rolled out, roll, round out row number four. Lampkin Kerr, Ezra Bobier. And then Bryce Prince, Danilo Lewis, and Max Flinders on row number six. A little further back, Ben Smith, Dion Campbell, Andrew Lee, Pinkstaff, Camacho, and uh, Augustin Sierra. And then we have Orengo, Pinkstaff again, this time Brian, of course, Bobby Davis, John Knowles, and Manny Segura round out. Either way, Loris Baz is going to set the pace. Here we go. Revs are up. Clutches are out, and we're away racing. Looks like everybody in the front row got a really good launch. Camp Peterson, and it looked like Heron did also, but I think it's going to be Camp P leading the way over Heron and Baz. Bobby Fong, good, good start as well. He gets himself into fourth early. Looks like Gagne fifth. So at the start, it's the same guy that took the, the win yesterday. Cam Peterson gets out front here, and uh, he's going to have Heron right behind him. And, you know, we've made comments in the past that when we get to some of these smooth tracks, Greg, the Ducatis seem to work really, really well. So let's see how these guys are on new tires. Looks like Heron's going to take a shot early, but Cam P runs it off into turn six pretty hard. And if you're watching Steel Commander Superbike for the first time and you're looking at two Warhorse Ducatis, those are the Warhorse HSBK racing bikes. One of the ways you can tell the difference between the two riders, not only size of the body, but look at the wheels. Josh Heron on the silver wheels and Loris Baz today in this race has black wheels. That's a really easy way for you to tell the difference between those two bikes. Cameron Peterson, Attack Performance Progressive Yamaha leading the way on this first lap, a good size up lap. Bobby Fong, Jason, hasn't had, like, the premier weekend that we've seen him have. But he's still right there up front early on. But it really takes about two laps for this to start sorting itself out. Yeah, and I think that when you say that about Bobby Fong, you know, Greg, coming here with the championship points lead, had one of those races yesterday where the team put their head together. I talked to Robbie Peterson this morning. He said, hey, that call, completely on me. I mean, he just put his hand up and said, that's my fault. We thought that that was going to be the way to go. The good the, news the is slick, the, the, slick the slick tires, tires to slick, the reins. Yeah. They went with slicks, but so did a lot of other people, didn't they? Oh, Lawrence yeah. Bass, Josh Heron, SDK. There was a lot of guys that went with those slicks as well. Betting is now available for Moto America fans. Go to nxtbets.com slash playma. For more information, visit motoamerica.com. So already, Greg, you can see a breakaway here of the top four guys. They've already started to just pull away from Jake Gagne in fifth. So we have to keep an eye again on our championship points leader in fifth place to see if he's going to be running into those same exact problems. But we have a distinct breakaway of these four. Goes Heron, Heron goes extremely tight down into turn six. What a move. Oh, oh, oh. Boy, you saw that from a corner ago. But Camp he's going to try to turn up the inside, but Heron's going to lean on him. And that's the problem right now is if Josh Heron with clean racetrack, what has he been holding back? Hanging out a lap and a half behind Cameron Peterson. Well, well you can see all those bikes under acceleration already just looking for grip. Moving just a little bit, but you know, these guys, they're gonna they're gonna be grabbing handfuls at the moment, Greg, while the tires are still new. Look how tight he goes in. Look at Bobby, Bobby Fong. Fong. He makes a big bet uh, bid for the third place spot over Baz. He makes it. Does he make it stick? Baz looks like he's being really protective. Yep. Yeah, the heel injuries are, are tough. And you can see Cam there in sixth place. He's the one just behind Gagne in the distance. So really, really nice effort so far from Cambobie. And uh, we'll see as this race goes, if fatigue plays in a role. Obviously, he's in a tremendous shape, but not sure how much he's really been able to do with that heel the way it has been. So, uh, but right now at the front, Cam, loses a little bit in the beginning of well he did on this lap anyways he brings it all back in the second half of the lap so you know. nonetheless these two Jake Gagne Cam Bobier currently seventh and eighth on the racetrack as Heron holding on to a two second lead out front of Cam Peterson Bobby Fong just goes his fastest personal lap of the race up front three he's seconds only, now we a... talked I talked to Heron about his motorcycle and and how the Ducati handles like sharp bumps and in looking forward, you have 
This racetrack, Ridge Motorsports Park, which is smooth. WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca on some new asphalt. Middle Iowa just got repaved. Coda's pretty decent with some new asphalt by the time we get there. And New Jersey Motorsports Park. Did you, and, sorry, yeah. sorry, I could just see. Did you see how quick Bobby's bike's turning into that, that tight left? He's able to get in there a lot tighter than Cam Peterson. So That's been the story, though, for is. the last several races. Yeah. Between... You know, the attack performance progressive Yamahas and how they decided to set up their motorcycle and wrench motorcycles. Now, the thing was this weekend for Bobby Fong and his team is they have a new swing arm that was designed by Nick Siling, and they were going to give it a try. But with some little bit of problems they had on Friday and with the way the weather was and everything else, it's like they've had to put that whole plan on pause with the new swing arm because they're hoping that the swing arm is going to give them a little bit more edge grip. Which, of course, everybody's looking for in this class. Yeah, everybody's it's always looking about for more injury. Yeah. Hannah, what do you know about this swing arm that Bobby Fong's got on it? Yeah, so Nick told me about it. He said it takes a couple of weeks for them to fabricate it after designing it, but it's got some different flex characteristics than the previous rendition that they were running to give him uh, a bit better drive grip and to allow the bike to turn a little bit better. He said this morning they were also looking for better feel on the front end, and they certainly found that. Bobby said, ultimately, line choice in these final laps will be a determining factor of whether he can hold on to this last podium position. Ooh, line uh, choice. Okay. I think, I think he's not only going to hold on to it, I think he's going to find himself one more spot up. Right Look here. Look at, Look at the that turning. Is... Oh, he's got it turned here side by side. So Fong tried it, but he had to lift it up for a second. So he lost a little bit of that corner speed. And Peterson, oh, oh whoa. Wow, he lost whoa. the front there. You know, it's good, though. Bobby was giving him some room. I mean, Bobby was yeah, yeah, giving yeah. him some room, and that's what made it to where those two didn't make contact. That's just good hard racing between the two of them. But, uh, man, you cannot get away from the fact that that bike turns the way it did. Now, look at this on the left-hand side of the screen. I mean, Greg, there's, like, four bike links in between those two as far as how tight he can get in there and turn it. And then you're going to watch this. This is just two veteran guys going at it. See that room that he's given Cam? He still <laughs> gave him some room. What Chavi fours and try to do the same thing as we get white flag, Greg. One lap to go for Josh Heron and what has just been a pure class performance by him, as you'd expect. This is the kind of stuff this guy does. Goes 41-1, 4.3 seconds, reading his board, seeing what's uh, seeing what's happening behind him just by reading that. But pretty much, you know, I don't want to say it was easy, but this guy has a tendency to make things look pretty simple. When he's dialed in, he is just unstoppable. And he needed a good start. He got one, was able to make a pass for the lead early on, set the pace. And for Josh Heron, the number two, it, it's what a, what a commanding performance for the War Horse HSBK Racing Ducati team. Of course, Heron, the 2022 Super Sport Champion, who led from the beginning of that championship, 2013, Superbike Champion. So many wins under his belt. That's great. The amount of points he's picking up right now, he's going to get these 25 points. And if you look at Gagne right now in ninth, he's going to get seven. So, I mean, he's just picking up a chunk of points right now here. And the championship lead is going to be really fun to look at at the end of this race as he's got about three more corners to go. And he looks back and sees nobody. And what a great sight and feel that's got to be for him. I'm not going to say you know, who I chose to be or who I picked today that could be the guy to win. Um, but I knew this guy was going to be a lot of trouble. Off the ridge comes Josh Heron, the California native, with a couple of corners to go. And in dry conditions under the beautiful Washington sunshine, it's all Josh Heron with a big victory. He takes the checkered flag. And now we're looking at more championship points as well as Bobby Fong has come across the stripe. Hayden Gillum got him. So Hayden Gillum got by Chavi Forres as well. So he's going to end up sixth on that stock thousand spec Honda. Boy, that's a pile of cash and contingency from Honda as well. So Hayden Gillum will come across the stripe just ahead of Chavi Forres and Cameron Bobier in sixth place. So it's going to be Heron Fong, Cameron Peterson comes home in third, Baz in fourth, Sean Dillon Kelly fifth. Super solid Hayden Gillum with a late race charge in sixth. Forez and Bobier and your former championship points leader, again, Jake Gagne, comes home in ninth place. Uh, so hopefully it's just a one-time thing, and that can happen. Sometimes in a race you forget to breathe and you can get arm pump. Uh, hopefully for, for Cam he's able to bounce back. Uh, Bobby did good, but, you know, Josh Heron right now, is he's really on on a roll if you go back to road america winning next race won a race here again this weekend 
man, he is really riding the best that he's rode. Even last year, I thought it was the, the best that he rode, and uh, I think he's starting to believe that you know this this title could be his. Loris Baz, Sean Dillon Kelly, and Hayden Gillum, first of the stock thousand competitors over Chavi Forez, Bobier, and Jake Gagne back there in ninth.